कैन वी यू नो रीड इट थ्रू योर एग्जाम्पल यू नो अगर आप अपनी जर्नी के बारे में बताएं यू नो फ्रॉम द टाइम यू गॉट कमीशन एंड देर आफ्टर नो डिफरेंट पोस्टिंग वॉट काइंड ऑफ यू नो प्रोफाइल वन कैन हैव यू नो एज लॉजिस्टिक्स ऑफिसर प्रोफेशनली एंड यू नो अदरवाइज साथ में बहुत सारी अपॉर्चुनिटीज हमें uh, अलग से भी मिलती हैं विच कुड अलाइन विद आर नो इंटरेस्ट इन यू नो स्पोर्ट्स और नो वेरियस अदर एक्टिविटीज हॉबीज जो कि बाद में जाके काफी काम में आती हैं तो कैन वी यू नो लर्न समथिंग अबाउट योर प्रोफाइल इन द एफर्स आपने शुरू के दिनों में फॉर्मेटिव ईयर्स की बात की पहला तीन चार पोस्टिंग तो मेरा पहला पोस्टिंग वॉज टू एन एफ स्टेशन आई मीन आई आई थिंक इससे अच्छा कुछ हो नहीं सकता है यू शुड फर्स्ट गेस्ट एक्सपोज टू व्हाट इज इंडियन एफोर्स देन एज आई मेंशन अर्लियर आई गॉट पोस्टेड टू द गड ऑफ फाइटर कंट्रोलर्स इन अमृतसर एंड वी सॉ ऑपरेशन ब्रास्टैक्स एट दैट टाइम एंड सॉ क्लोजली हाउ अ फॉरवर्ड एस नीड्स टू फंक्शन एंड देर आफ्टर आई हैड द ग्रेट ऑपरचुनिटी आई वॉज सेलेक्टेड टू बिकम अ डिविजनल ऑफिसर इन नेशनल डिफेंस अकेडमी एन डी ए इन किलो स्कॉटन विच वॉज अ ग्रेट लेसन इन एच आर आई मीन एट दैट स्टेज साढ़े पांच साल छह साल के सर्विस में टू बी पोस्टेड एज अ डिविजनल ऑफिसर इन एन डी ए आई थिंक इट कांट बी एनी थिंग बेटर देन दैट आई सेकेंड दैट सो यू सेड यू आर इन किलो स्कॉटन राइट that's right so that is our uh, you know neighboring squad and i was in juliet squad <laughs> oh, wonderful <laughs> wonderful so what happened was now when you asked a related question about sports now what happened uh, i used to be uh, physically fit at that time as i mentioned just before joining air force i had played junior india in badminton uh, i realized quickly that badminton is not a sport those days very popular in the air force so i started squash and i took it very seriously and by the time i reached nda uh, i was playing air force and i was made the nda uh, officer ic for squash and the nda team during my time uh, never before and never after all five players were india players that I was see. the standard of the nda team at that time second term all five blazers second term they got blazers because they were all representing india mm-hmm. so what i am saying is that really put me into the right mold Uh, there was nothing better than doing a hard day's work and playing a hard game of squash in the evening with these boys uh thereafter of course uh, my personal journey i went on to win the afos championship five times and i represented services at nationals and services by the way were the national champions uh, wow. the 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 best team in fact our b team used to be the number 2 team in india the a team used to be number 1 and the b team used to be number 1 uh, number 2 so that was the standard of squash uh, in services at that time uh, old time so, i think i remember you know uh, manchanda i think major manchanda yeah, raj manchanda uh, like when when i started playing raj manchanda was still around great squash player probably the greatest squash player india produced till that time uh, he is a rimkolian and uh, uh, an amazing squash player eight times national champion unprecedented and uh, carried on winning till the age of 37 years of age so he is an incredible sportsman so and and i by the way i basically learned my basic squash from raj manchanda oh because he was he was teaching he was teaching squash at lawrence school sanar so i took from amritsar i took two months leave went to sanar uh, learned squash from him and then I of see. course <laughs> the rest is i i could do a lot of things in squash so very very so, passionate about uh... Uh, squash or sports as such yes 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 and you know as i was telling you those days in punjab were very difficult days blue star was at its prime so what happened was we re- never really had a chance to go out to town or something because uh, uh, amritsar used to be under curfew most of the time yes so the best way to spend time used to be go and uh, sweat it out in the squash court and that is how i improved my game and i uh, gave it my all so thereafter i had the opportunity of tenanting some very very interesting appointments i commanded uh, three uh, units as a squadron leader i commanded the uh, depot in gwalior for mirat spares and uh, thereafter as a group captain i commanded an asp you know the distribution hub that i mentioned mm-hmm. which are there in commands that was at baroda and then as an air commodore i was aoc uh, at the equipment depot in manauri so uh, i got three uh, command assignments of course i got to do i did the uh, staff college in wellington then uh, 
I did the National Defense College in Delhi. So there were great exposures which Indian Air Force gave me. And uh, from each rank, you uh, got more enrichment and more satisfaction and happiness as you moved along. So that is what. And then, of course, after being in AOC, I was uh, as an Air Vice Marshal, went as ACS procurement, where I was dealing with it. I was the head of the revenue procurement for Indian Air Force. I applied for the post of uh, Chairman and General Manager Canteen Stores Department, for which I was selected. I'm the first Air Force officer ever to have gone there. And uh, I spent two very good years heading as a country head of uh, Canteen Stores Department. By the way, that is the largest retail chain of the country. It has something like 3,600 outlets, the URCs that we see. Mm -hmm. And we had an annual turnover in excess of 20,000 crores. That was, uh, that, that, I mean, selling from brooms to cars, everything comes under the inventory of uh, canteen stores department. That, that was a huge challenge by itself. Uh, the VAT changeover to GST happened during my time, which was a challenge because each and every index that is there in the inventory had to change. The pricing had to change from VAT regime to GST regime. But we, by the way, with a lot of pride, I say this, we were the first government organization in India to effectively change over the complete VAT regime to GST regime. And for this, we drew praise from no less than North Block and Finance Ministry. So uh, I understand you also a recipient of uh, Ativishesh Seva Medal. So has that got something to do with your contribution in the CST? Yes. First of all, I got the Vishis Seva Medal uh, earlier when I served as in Centre Command as a group captain. And of course, this for my work in uh, the canteen stores department. Uh, in fact, it was General Bipin Rawat uh, who was uh, very keen for me to get the presidential award. And that is how I got the Ati Vishis Seva Medals 2018. Award happened in 2019 Jan, but it was raised and cleared in 2018. Okay. So, uh, and from there, uh, where did you move on? So, I picked up my Air Marshal's rank uh, when I was in CSD. So, although my the government had appointed me for three years, I could not serve for three years there because my rank came. Uh, so, I moved to Nagpur, which is the maintenance command headquarters. And I became an Air Marshal in 2018. And uh, feel very proud that I served there for four years in the three-star rank. Uh, before retiring so a lot of opportunities have come your way you know going abroad uh, which again is something that you no know, lot of officers they do look forward to ki bhai hame koi bahar jaane ka kaun sa mauka mil sakta hai so we have some deputations opportunities for deputations going abroad for various missions you know for procurement the logistics uh, plays a very uh, important role you know as far as uh, when you have these deals for various aircrafts or radars. So along with the, you know, operational staff, you know, you have the technical as well as the logistics team, which is going there. So what kind of opportunities exist in this field uh, for the logistics officer? Actually, today the uh, atmosphere has become very, very nice for uh, the future logistics officers. Because, you know, in addition to what you mentioned, going to the embassies on postings, uh, we also have these international logistics agreements that our country is entering into. For example, we have an international logistics agreement with the United States. We have an uh, agreement with Australia. We have an agreement with Japan. We have an agreement with uh, France. So what happens is these, whenever we conduct exercises or whenever they are passing by our country and they need any kind of logistics support in terms of fuel, in terms of maintenance, in time, let's say there is a snag, what happens is uh, we have an understanding that we'll help each other. So as part of that also, there are a lot of uh, travel opportunities, a very good, useful travel opportunities. And then we are participating in international exercises in various places. We have go to Alaska frequently. We go to Singapore. We go to so many other places, South Africa. So what happens is when you go on these exercises, uh, many a time there is one uh, element of logistics that goes so there is a lot of learning that happens during the exercises because exercises are like a simulation for war. Yes. So you 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 get a feel, you get a flavor of what will happen in a operational scenario during war. What is the kind of urgency with which you have to pre-position spares or what happens when there is a panic. So all these things are great learning experiences. And in addition to it, you also have these humanitarian and uh, UN missions that come up. Like uh, for quite some time, we used to have Congo missions, Sudan missions and all that. So 
there would always be a logistics element that goes. In fact, I was for one of the Congo missions and uh, honestly speaking, the first two months when you prepare for the missions uh, of uh, United Nations, it is basically all logistics work because you're going to order the containers in which the Saman has to go. You must plan how much of rations, how much of fuel, what kind of armament you're taking with you, how are you going to transport the whole thing, will it go by ship, will it go by air, you have to clothe the complete contingent. So the the success of a good UN mission, normally they go for about a period of 11 months, the success of a good UN mission depends a lot on the logistics planning that happens before you go. So that everything is smooth over there. And then the operators, it could be the helicopter pilots, it could be the engineers, it could be the fight controllers. They, they, they can have a free flow of job, uh, ATC, for example. Uh, they can they can do go about doing their work in an unhindered manner. So the success of any kind of operations depends a lot on how good the, is the logistics planning before embarking upon a, uh, operations. And I think the same goes when we work out our war plans, and that is what our uh, doctrine also speaks a lot about. Okay, how well do we uh, plan out when we are going in for an operational uh, eventuality? What is the kind of stamina that we have? How much can we last? How long can we last? How will the spares fetch up? How will the armaments fetch up? All these small, small things become very important in the planning stage, and they determine most of the times, the outcome of wars. You look at the Ukraine and Russia war today. It is finally going to boil down to who is going to outlast the other person. Absolutely, absolutely. No, in fact, I, I was just uh, going through certain articles. You know, uh, the, the chief of air staff was on record saying that, you know, logistics is going to decide the fate of wars uh, in future. And the same thing was echoed by uh, the army chief and uh, in no unequivocal terms, you know, one can say, yes, you know, logistics is going to be a very, very critical factor as far as any warfare, future warfare uh, outcomes are concerned. Now, uh, in line with this, uh, we have uh, now entering an era of joint menship, you know, integrated theater commands. And now there is a talk of having a... Um, logistics uh, tri service logistics command so any um, uh, any light you can throw on this yeah i was very privileged uh, after my csd tenure i got exposed a lot to general bipin rawat at that time and thereafter he became a cds uh, i was involved in a lot of preliminary discussions when the theaters were being discussed i am talking of uh, the period between 2018 and 19 and uh, as you very rightly said Apart from the five or six operational commands that are going to are going to come out, I mean, uh, we are still waiting for the final uh, this things. But definitely, one of the three support commands is going to be the logistics command. Is what was uh, in the original plan of scheme of things. Now, apart from the logistics command, there is also going to be a very strong joint logistics establishment. Within the five operational command, let's say you have three army commands, one air force command and one naval command, as is being talked of now. Yeah. All the five elements will have an integrated logistics command, uh, integrated logistics function, which will operate through the, they are calling it JLN, Joint Logistics Nodes. So they're going to be set up in various parts of the country. And there are a lot of common areas that have been shortlisted. For example, armament, for example, clothing, for example, rations, for example, procurement of a lot of common spares. Let's say we're talking of helicopters, we're talking of MiG-29s. There's so many, uh, even, even radars for that matter, there's so many common spares that Army, Navy and Air Force are using. So what happens is these JLNs will then be uh, jointly manned by the three services. And uh, well, you never know what will happen in the future. We could possibly end up Wearing the same uniform, the same ranks, anything is possible. <laughs> uh, I, I, I mean, I don't want to venture yeah, too much into the future. Conjectures but that at is the what moment, is, yes. Uh, uh, that is what is jointness being spoken about. Let us see how things evolve. It may take a little time, but uh, the thought process is very clear that we would like uh, uh, a joint effort as far as logistics is concerned. Because I, if even if 50% of that happens, it will result in a huge cost cutting and will improve our efficiency in reaching across to the final user. 
absolutely absolutely i'm 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 sure it is going to uh, also ensure in lot of savings uh, in terms of you know when these things are stored separately in army navy air force and they will perhaps you know be a common pool from where you can draw or you know position them uh, coming to the experience again now the air force had taken a decision a uh, few years back to have uh, some vacancies for um, logistics and adam as well as technical uh, um, uh, branch in nda right along alongside the earlier uh, the nda was only for flying now uh, of late uh, they have been i i think it's been more than 3 uh, or 4 years that we have had uh, cadets going to nda they can opt for flying uh, as a second this thing you know they could opt for uh, technical branch uh, they could opt for adam or logistics so uh, do you have any idea on this uh, personally uh, having seen training at nda from very close quarters for more than 3 years as a divisional officer uh, i couldn't agree more with the uh, reasoning behind this move it's a mm -hmm. fantastic move because when people go through the grind together in in life when they meet each other at work or outside work you know the bonhomi or the the way you connect with each other uh, is it cannot be replicated by any other means no no course in later life brings you as close to each other as it does in nd so mm -hmm. as far as the thought process is concerned it is perfect and i look forward to the day when all officers of the indian air force pass through the portals of nda and they are after get into different branches that's the ideal situation of course the problem here is the limitation of how big can nda be because if they start Absolutely. absorbing everybody from army navy and air force nda will have to be five times the present size yes. so these are things which the planners have to look after in future but as it stands today the situation is that in addition to flying branch they have also introduced a percentage of engineering officers who will be coming from nda so after finishing the training in national defense academy they will then come into indian air force and go through the grind which they do right now in aftc and at air force academy that's another place we are trying to bring in joint training together for some at least for one term so uh, i think it's a move in the right direction but ideally if you personally ask me everyone should come from nda and everyone should go to the academies and then pass out because what happens is that is the ultimate way in which you will connect with each other throughout your life absolutely absolutely i mean i can't agree more on this being an ex india myself uh, the kind of you know the uh, understanding you have about each other you know so the same thing grows while you rise in the ranks in se uh, separate services so today you know you have all the three service chiefs you know were the course mates uh, from the same course of nda right i mean in fact two the air chief and the naval chief happen to be from the same squadron so yeah i mean all these things are definitely going to help so uh, that was a very uh, exhaustive and comprehensive i would say account of you know uh, the life as a loss six officer and of course we have learned about wonderful uh, journey that you have had in the air force i am as say you know must be fortunate also and not too many people have this kind of an opportunity and uh, finally you know if i may request you to you know uh, say a few words for the aspirants who are aspiring to join uh, the air force and especially the logistics branch thank you very much uh, well all i can say to the young boys and girls who are aspiring to join the armed forces primarily and then in case they do want to join the logistics branch uh, i think there's a great future waiting for you uh, not just uh, in the indian air force but even if you do leave indian air force uh, after 12 or 13 years whatever when you step out in the corporate world there is definitely a thinking in the hr agencies in the corporate side where they are increasingly preferring people coming from uh the armed forces and if you happen to be from logistics uh, you will make excellent supply chain specialists because what happens is uh, the kind of time frames the kind of work culture that we operate under are fabulous you have to 
experience it to believe it. So I feel these 12, 13 years will bring in a lot of regimentation into your personal lives. It will it'll make you more disciplined, more focused. And uh, uh, when you enter the corporate world after 12 years, you're going to be an absolute asset. Not for that company. I would say you're going to be an asset for the nation. So I feel whether you serve in the Air Force till uh, you retire or you step out in between and join the corporate side, either way, you will contribute to nation, national building. And that is a great cause. And uh, I have a, I'm very, very optimistic that this generation is going to be a fantastic generation, which will take the country forward. Chau, sir, thank you very much. It's been wonderful uh, talking to you. Uh, I'm sure the uh, viewers, the aspirants are going to find it equally um, useful or rather more useful than, you know, we can think of because of, uh, it is their future. And like you very rightly said, no, regardless of whether they join as a short service officer or they complete uh, the tenures or complete their service as a permanent commission officers, uh, yes, opportunities outside uh, today, especially in logistics branch, I think they're mind boggling, you know, with uh, so many supply chains, everything is revolving on delivery and, you know, uh, you know, with this, you have the Amazon, the Flipkart and, you know, everything, I, I think, you know, so uh, I'm sure, you know, uh, these guys are going to have a bright future in any case and coupled with that discipline and that professionalism that you have. So thank you very much, sir. And it's been a pleasure uh, talking to you. Thank you so much, sir. Jai Hind. Jai Hind.